In this video, I'm going to go through how to create or how to use a lookup function. Um, and I'm going to use Summer 08 Question Paper 3 to demonstrate how to use it. I've already got J8 phone open. And that is this spreadsheet here. Um, and we're going to do the lookup on this. So it says for question 2, in the department column, use a lookup function to show the department name. So use the decode column for the lookup value and the file J8 code for the array. So I'll just show you the spreadsheet again, just so you can see. So the department column is here, just goes down to there. Um, and then it says the decode column. But you need to remember that a lookup value is a single cell, it's not a whole column. Because basically what a lookup function does is it will look up this code here, MD in this case. It will look for this in our table, lookup table, which in this case is an external file. So here is MD. And what will happen is, is that Excel will then place, or what we, we're going to tell it to do, is to place the actual full departmental um, name in the cell that's in this spreadsheet. It will go in this cell here. So that's what the table does, is it will look for this code in a different place and extract the, the relevant data into the cell that we want it to go in. So if we have to go back to this, uh, the table, the spreadsheet for the table, you can see that the data is arranged in columns. So the data is arranged vertically. So we're basically going to be using a V lookup. If the table is arranged in rows, then we would use a H lookup because the data is arranged horizontally. So the V stands for vertical and the H stands for horizontal. So in this case, we're using a V lookup. What I find easiest to do is if I have a lookup table that's in an external file like this one, when I say external, I mean the lookup table's not in this spreadsheet, it's in a separate file. I find it easiest to go to view and arrange all, and I arrange vertically. And it just makes me, it makes it easy for me to see <coughs> the lookup table. And it also utilizes some of the shortcut features in Excel. Um, and I'll go through those in a sec. So basically what we're going to do is in cell A7, this is where we want the result to be. So we're going to open the insert function button and we want to use the VLOOKUP. Now, if the VLOOKUP's not in your recently used list, all you have to do is type in lookup and it should give you, yeah, so it gives you a list of functions that you could use and here's the VLOOKUP. You could also type in something like table um, and that will bring up all the functions that use a table. As you can see, there's loads, but the VLOOKUP's close to the top. So you can type in the search for a function option, anything that's relevant to the function and it brings up um, some useful functions. So that's worth knowing about. So I just double click because that's the one I want to use and it opens up the actual window where we can put in the function itself. And this is useful because it shows you the parts of the function. You'll notice here that the first three parts of a function are bold. Um, that means that they're compulsory parts of the function. You have to put those parts in. The one that's not in bold, which is the range lookup, can be left blank. So that's optional. And I'll go through when we would use that in a sec. First thing we need to do is put the lookup value. And as I said, it's a single cell. In this case, it's from the decode column. So it's MD. And then the table array. Um, I'm just going to highlight my table from here. I've already gone ahead and I've sorted my table from A to Z. That's important because that will ensure that the correct data is placed in my results. So you should always sort your lookup table. You'll notice now because I split the cells, split the view, and I've highlighted the table here, um, Excel's automatically put in all of the information that I need. So it's put in the sheet that the table is in. Exclamation mark means that this sheet is in an external file. And then we've got A2 to B12. That's the codes 
that my table array are in and you'll notice the dollar signs there mean that the table array is absolute that means that when I copy my function down into uh, row 8, 9, 10 and, and so on to 13 that part of my function will not change because of the dollar signs we want the lookup value to change because we want MD to become AC and then to become PR and so on. So that is why we don't put dollar signs for the lookup value because we want that to change relative to the row that it's in. And you'll see that in a bit more detail when I finish. The column index number is linked to the column that my function is for. And I think I've missed out some of my cell references. So I'll do that again because this window has covered it. So. Yeah, so it should be to B13. Column index number, basically, you're looking at the number of columns that the table is made up of. In this case, it's made up of two columns. And the data that I want to get my column from is this column here, column number two. So I'm going to put a two in there. And you'll see that Excel has already pulled out the full department managing director, which is what we want to go in our cell. Now, I'll just explain the range lookup. You either would write in there a true, you'd write true or false. Now, true would mean that you get an estimated value, which basically means if you had a uh, lookup value which had grade boundaries in it, for example, so we said um, 90 to 100 is an A star, and the lookup value that you have is 95 there's not going to be um, an actual grade for 95 specifically. But if you write true in the range lookup, Excel can then make uh, an estimation of what the correct grade should be for that according to the boundaries. In this case, each one of our codes, our decodes, has an exact match for it in the, in the table here. So all we need to do is either leave this blank in this case or write false. I'm just going to write false in there just so you can see what it looks like to fill it in and press OK. But even if you leave that blank, if it's an exact match, it's still correct. So there we go. So I've got MD and then I've got the actual department managing director, which is what I was looking for. And then I'm just going to move my cursor to the bottom right hand corner of the cell over the little square here till it becomes a black cross. And I'm going to double click to copy my function down. And as you can see, that has changed. So I'll just demonstrate the relative cell referencing. So if I click on A8, you'll see that that lookup value has changed from B7 to B8, but my table array has still remained the same. So it's still A2 to B13 because I've got dollar signs in front of the letter, column reference and the row reference of my range. That's why that hasn't changed. And if I click on each one, you'll see the changes in the actual lookup value there. So that's that's how we would do our uh, lookup. And it's the same for VLOOKUP or HLOOKUP. The only difference is that the VLOOKUP is vertical data and the HLOOKUP is horizontal data. The only other thing I want to mention here, um, just before I end this, this video, is the lookup table, it's best not to close it, but rather just minimize it because if I, when I come to printing, if I've closed my lookup sheet, then when I go to show my formulas, I'll just show you. So I'll go to formulas and show formulas. And if I open this up to make sure everything's visible, it will add the path inside. It will add the path inside here. Um, and it will make this really, really long. Um, so then you're going to have problems trying to fit the whole function into your printout. And uh, we want to keep the cell as short as possible. We want to keep the data as short as possible. So I'll just show you what it looks like when you close it and what the, the, the hassle you're going to have. So if I close this spreadsheet and don't save, you'll automatically see this has now changed. So if I open this now, well, it's not that much longer, but it's a little bit longer. And the problem is, is that if you have lots of functions in all of these uh, cells, it's going to be difficult for you to fit the full function it on a single page, which is what sometimes Cambridge asks you to do. So I would always just minimize that uh, 
spreadsheet rather than closing it. And the other thing you need to make sure is that you save as, so I'm just going to save this to the desktop and I want to save it as an Excel workbook. Why? Because um, an Excel workbook will store the function. Yeah, if you save it as a CSV file, it will not save the function. It will store the result, but it won't save the actual function. So you'll find that all your functions will disappear. So that's another important thing to note.